I've been told my voice gets high in my intros, so... What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here. Today, Google held a Chrome announcement where they covered everything from Chrome OS to Chrome browser to web stores and really everything in between. So I want to recap all the chrominess that went down today. Let's go ahead and get started. If you see me look down, so I got some notes in front of me. The press conference just ended. So let's start with the browser. Let's go ahead and take a look at Chrome. So they announced Chrome 9. They didn't give a date for when it's going to come, but they did show some of the cool features Chrome 9 is going to have, uh, including instant search now in Chrome's Omnibox. Very similar to what you see on Google's instant search and go to google.com, but it's now going to be in Chrome's Omnibox. It's going to learn a little bit better uh, the websites that you visit, which could be good and bad depending on how many people use your computer. Uh, they also announced something called Crankshaft, which sounds surprisingly dirty. Uh, it's going to give you two times improvement in JavaScript speed, which is awesome. Chrome is really known for its speed, and now it's going to get even faster. Uh, they claim that Chrome 9 will be 100 times faster uh, than Internet Explorer was in 2008. 2008 was a long time ago, I didn't really see that as being a, a valid claim, but 100 times faster than anything is great. Chrome 9 is going to be lightning quick. Uh, it's also going to have some new built-in PDF reading functionality, so if you view documents quite a bit, no longer have to open them or open with or save as, you can view them right in the web browser. Kind of cool, or no need to go to Google Docs preview or any of that kind of business. Uh, they're also going to be updating the Chrome Web Store. Uh, think of this as web apps like you could have on your Android phone, your iPad, or your iPhone, now right in your browser. So you're going to be saying, well, aren't there web apps you can just go to a website and play them? Uh, it's going to have sort of icons that are going to launch the app right inside of the browser. Think of the browser as the platform. Uh, for these applications to run or the operating system that these applications are going to run in. Uh, web apps that are going to be available, it's actually going to be rolling out today, uh, include offerings from NPR, New York Times, uh, Amazon, and a few other. Uh, they don't look like they have a focus on gaming, but there could potentially be some more web-based games uh, coming out soon. Amazon also showed a new Kindle uh, application which is going to be launching in the Chrome Web Store. Uh, it's not going to be coming out for a little while, at least it's sometime in 2011. Good, but now you're going to be able to view all of your Kindle books. It's going to work inside of the WhisperSync and Kindle ecosystem, so you'll be able to get all your books reading uh, from your web browser with a little bit more relative ease than what we had before. You're not going to have the limitations that you had also with uh, the previous versions of the Kindle web store, you're able to get full books and access to all of your content. So let's talk about the new operating system bearing the Chrome A name, appropriately called Chrome OS. We finally have some details on this guy. It was announced quite a while ago. We've seen previews of it. Essentially what it is, it's a cloud-based operating system, and cloud just means information stored on a server. Uh, so while there is a local operating system loaded on a machine, uh, it's going to rely really almost heavily and close to exclusively uh, on being online and connecting all of your information. Let me go ahead and tell you what I mean. So first again, it is going to be cloud-based. To set up a new Chrome OS machine, it's going to take four steps and less than one minute to do. So think of it when you get a new Android phone, you type in your Google information, it pulls in your contacts, your email, your calendar. Uh, it's going to be that same sort of thing, but now for uh, an operating system. So all your contacts, information, whatever you have sunk to the Google Cloud, so to speak, is going to be put right on to your desktop. So some of the things that we learned new about Chrome OS, it's going to support multiple accounts. So if you want to use it and your wife or girlfriend, mom or dad want to use your account, they'll be able to log into their own a Google account and get access to all of their information, not yours, uh, in the Chrome OS experience. So because everything's stored online, really there isn't that much stored locally, uh, you're going to be able to segment what people can get on the desktop. Uh, so the hardware that they demoed, it was just demo hardware, but it did return from sleep almost instantaneously. Google said you're limited only by the speed of your hand uh, to turn this thing on. It was really, really lightning quick, so kind of cool. And speaking of those guest accounts, uh, when they log in, there's going to also be an incognito mode. So everything that the guest is using 
will be destroyed on logout. There'll be no record of it. So you can use that for whatever uh, you would like. Uh, it's also going to be in offline mode, of course. What if you don't have internet access, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, Google Docs was shown running offline, which is kind of neat. You'll be able to just do all of your uh, word processing right on Google Docs and not have to worry about being connected. And once you do connect online, it'll sync that right up. Uh, the offline mode, it's going to be really app specific and the apps are going to have to be coded using HTML5 uh, with some specific requirements in order to run in the background. Kind of interesting. Uh, Google also showed a new feature called Cloud Print, which is going to let you print to your home and network computer from anywhere you are, which is a really neat feature. You don't have to be on your home network to print, but you can print from anywhere you are and pick it up as soon as you get home. Could be kind of cool for, uh, for pictures and some documents. So how are you going to get online? Well, that's where Verizon comes in. You're sort of hearing their name popping up everywhere with connected devices. Google and Verizon are going to give you a free 100 megabytes of data per day to use with your Chrome OS. So for mostly just for syncing your information and probably some light web browsing. However, of course, they know you're probably going to want to use more than that 100 megabytes for free. And of course, there's Wi-Fi built in so you can use your Wi-Fi network without any charge. Uh, but there's also going to be a $9.99 plan uh, available per day for unlimited access. No contracts required. You can manage it right from your computer. Uh, so you don't have to sign a two-year deal. You can use it whenever you choose. Use it one day, not use it the next day. Uh, since it is uh, Verizon relying on CDMA network, uh, it's going to be available just in the U.S. for right now. Certain international launch plans are imminent, but nothing has been announced quite yet. So while well, Google did talk about a lot of really cool features coming to Chrome OS, the operating system itself is still very much in the oven and not yet fully cooked. In the most recent build, we still don't have USB support, so don't expect that uh, anytime soon in the most recent developer versions. Uh, there also are still a ton of bugs and kinks to be ironed out and worked out. So when are you able to get your hands on a Chrome OS laptop or device? The answer is going to be mid-2011. Uh, we will see Intel-based machines from Samsung and Acer. Uh, Google also showed a developer platform, uh, similar to what you'd say would be the, the Nexus One equivalent uh, on Android, called the CR48. All the specs of these Acer and Samsung machines, we don't really know yet. Uh, think of Chrome OS as very, very, very much a light operating system. I don't think it's something you're going to be able to use on a regular basis, certainly not going to be for power users or gamers. Uh, but there is something to be said for the folks that just want browser-based computing. So you want it just to work. You want it to be quick. Uh, it's almost like the reasons why you would use a tablet, for example, why you use an iPad. When you want the information to be there, to be fast, to sync, and to be very easy to navigate and use. I'm not sure who the target demographic for Chrome OS is going to be. I think that is still yet to be carved out, but there is no doubt that it's an appealing platform. Uh, it's going to draw a lot of interest. Whether or not it's got legs to sustain itself, in this very crowded sea of operating systems from Windows 7 and OS 10, um, and now with all these new tablet OSs, uh, is Google competing with themselves? We're going to see a ton of Android-based tablets with the next edition of Android Honeycomb. We already see it now uh, with Froyo. Uh, is Android can really, or is Google rather, going to be consuming themselves and competing with themselves? Uh, for market share. I think that's going to be one of the most interesting developments. So what do you guys think about Chrome OS? Are you excited? Not excited? Uh, you cannot wait to get your hands on a viable web-based operating system or would you rather stick with your desktop platform? I really want to hear uh, from you. Anyway guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.